All right, guys, welcome back to another episode in the Football Manager 2018 in five years series where we're covering Scottish teams. We've advanced it five years into the future and we're seeing how each team is getting on. Up next, we're going to be covering Kilmarnock. Kilmarnock in real life at the moment, flying high under Steve Clark, probably enjoying their best spell in probably, I'd say, at least two decades. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. I can't remember Kilmarnock ever doing so well. At least in my lifetime, I think I uh, remember them in 99, I think they finished third in the league. But apart from that, I mean, I think this has to be their best spell. It's not only the, the position they're in, it's also the the quality of football they're playing, the wins against the big clubs in the uh, division. So yeah, Kilmarnock playing great in real life. Can they produce that same kind of form though in Football Manager? Well, we're about to find out. So let's see what kind of transfers they made in their first season. Well, it looks like Kilmarnock were pretty quiet. Brought in a couple of loan players, Calvin McLennan for Rangers and Fraser Murray for Hibernian. Neil, Con Neil Collins came in on a free and they loans loaned a bunch of players out, including selling Alan Power to Dundalk for 16.75k. Dundalk paying money for a player. Weird. It's not, it's not often you see that. Uh, Irish teams paying money. Must be half decent. Let's have a quick look at the guy. I wonder if he's still at Dundalk. No, he now plays for Shamrock Grover, same league, value at 5.5. His stats are pretty... I wouldn't say they're the best. I can't really see why someone would pay for this. He definitely seems like the kind of player you'd pick up on a free. But it looks like at the time Dundalk were happy enough to pay, you know, at 16k from. So, you know what, that is their problem. Looking at these signings, be interested to see how Kamanic do in the first season. Um, they loaned out Adam Fritzel, which I think's. I think it's a strange. I think he could have done a job at Kilmarnock, especially in the first season. But we'll see, man. We'll see. Can Steve Clark reproduce the form he's producing in real life? And it looks like the answer to that is a big definitive no. Kilmarnock coming last. 34 points, getting them relegated. It was a close battle down the bottom. Only two points separating the bottom three. But still, they've been relegated for the division. Turns out Steve Clark left around the end of March. Paul Hartley came in. Tried to steady the ship, couldn't get the job done, and Kilmarnock go crashing into the championship. Wasn't expecting that. Perhaps wasn't expecting them to have the great season they had, you know, in real life. But I thought they would have done enough to avoid relegation, but obviously not. Well, the season started off all right for them, picking up a couple of wins in the friendlies, and then progressing through the Betfred Cup, where they beat Dunfermline in the second round before losing to Hamilton which was disappointing at home, what, 2-1 at Rugby Park. And uh, Stephen O'Donnell got a goal late on, but the goals for Greg Dockey and Giannis Scondras put Hamilton in front in that quarterfinal tie. And you can see already they're into, what, way into September, and they've not even won a game in the league yet, so that's the, the, form, the league form's pretty poor. A draw against St. Johnson, defeats against Hart, Celtic, Hamilton, draw against Mullerwell, defeats against Aberdeen. Uh, yeah, they finally picked up a win here against Ross County, but a bad start in the league, and it may have been too a bad start, and then it was uh, too late for them to, I don't know, come back to Jordan Jones there getting the win against Ross County. Kind of similar to actually how the real life went from this season. They had a bad start, then they brought Steve Clark in, and, you know, they hit the form running, but unfortunately in this save, they already had Steve Clark. They didn't have the Steve Clark uh, trump card to utilise, so, yeah, it doesn't look like they're going to come back. Look at these, this, look at that, man. So many defeats and losses and draws in there. Um, picking just the odd winners. You can't see many green, I and mean, when you can't see many green, that's when you know you're fucked. Uh, lost at the earliest possible stage in the Scottish Cup, fourth round, another home defeat against Dundee. It's another home cup tie they've lost. This time they were winning a goal for Lee Irwin in the seventh minute. The same Lee Irwin getting sent off in the 46th, which didn't help his team, and Dundee came back with goals for Randy Waters and Glenn Camara. So, uh, yeah, not great there, season for Kilmarnock. That's probably an understatement. Get coming last in the league and getting knocked out of both cups at home at Rugby Park. Not good. And picked up a win against Hibernian. And then a win against Rangers. So, well, they did pick up some good wins there. A, a win at uh, the dump, <laughs> Easter Road. And then a win at, uh, away at Rugby Park. No, they beat, Hibs at, come on, they beat Hibs at Rugby Park and then they beat Rangers at Ibrox. 3-1 win, which is a great result. Gary Dicker, Lee Irwin, and Eman Brophy getting the goals there. So, looks like they did all right. And then, I believe it was, yeah, it was actually the Ross County game is when Steve Clark left. And then, look at that. So, 
Paul Hartley came in, got a win against Rangers in two defeats, and then he won three games in a row in the Championship playoff group, a loss to St. Johnson, and then a draw against Hamilton. So if they could have beat Hamilton in the last game, they would have stayed up. And they never were. They were in front at first. Craig Gelty then were behind. Lee Irwin getting a goal in the 65th minute. 25 minutes to save their season. Couldn't get a goal. And that sent them crashing down to the championship. And as a, as effect of uh, cha- going down the championship, you can see they've had to sell some of their better players. A lot of, a lot of players going on a free. Then you've got Jordan Jones went to Blackburn for quarter million. Greg Taylor going to Rangers 825k. Ian Wilson also going to Rangers 160k. And a bunch of players got it loan in a free. So, yeah, once you're in the high divisions, when you go down, I mean, you're, you're not going to keep your best players, unfortunately. And that's just what's happened to Kilmarnock here. So they could struggle. They might struggle to come back up. Will they come back up? You know what? I'm not entirely sure. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, they did bring in David Bates on a free transfer, though, which is pretty damn good. He just went to Hamburg in real life. So they did all right with that signing. Brought in Louis Toshney, Ian Figures, uh, Henderson and McCart on loan. So... I don't know, actually, Kilmarnock have made some good signings here, albeit they've lost to David Templeton on loan as well for Hamilton. Lost a lot of their key players, but they've made good signings there, and I would not be surprised if they go straight back up after those signings. Well, how wrong was I? Straight back up, no chance at eight place finish for Kilmarnock in the Ladbrokes Championship. Paul Hartley leaving the job in December, and uh, yeah, Kilmarnock on a free fall. And I'm surprised they brought in a bunch of good players, and I know they sold their key players, but I thought... They would have had enough in the, the squad to at least put a challenge in for a promotion place. You know, try and finish top four. If not, win the league. Try and get up through the playoffs. But that didn't happen eighth. And they were kind of lucky not to get relegated there. So terrible season for Kilmarnock. Unless they did anything in the Cups. I mean, this is going to go down as worse. It's definitely a worse season than the last. Yeah, so yeah, you see, won a bunch of friendlies. One loss against St Mirren. Had fans through the Betfred Cup. Albeit they got a pretty favourable group. Lost in the second round against Aberdeen at Pataudry. Sean McBride and Nicky Maynard sending Kilmarnock out the competition. Did beat Dumbarton in the Ironbrew third cup round, but then they lost to Dundee in the fourth round. So poor innings. See, look at so many red here, so many losses. Just another disappointing season here at Fort Kilmarnock. Scottish Cup, uh, fourth round, got a draw against St Johnston before losing the replay 3-1. And then come the end of the season, again, the end of the season, their form pe- uh, picked up a little bit, but by that time, they, were, they weren't really in a relegation battle, and they weren't they weren't going to catch anybody in front of them, so very disappointing for Kilmarnock. Can they improve in the summer here, and go back at it at the third season, and try and earn promotion back to the Premiership? So again, Kilmarnock selling more, uh, making more money through sales of players than they've spent. They did manage to get Jamie McCart on a free transfer, so they got him on loan at first for Celtic and then managed to uh, seal the deal on a free. It looks like Celtic maybe weren't interested in him. They also brought in a bunch of loan players and a bunch of free players. Brought in Sean McBride for Aberdeen, Aidan McDonald for Celtic. Whether any of these guys are good enough, we do not know. In terms of players they've sold, not a lot really. Most players got it on loan, some got it in a free. Dom Thomas got a public thistle for over 100k. And ends Cameron going to Aberdeen for 37. So can Kilmarnock bounce back? It's more or less, more or less the same squad. They've got I know the brand changes, but nothing, nothing great, nothing major. It's going to be tough for them, I think. If they struggled last season, they haven't really, they haven't really made any signings to uh, convince me that they're going to, you know, do anything massively different. So let's see here how they get on. All right, well, a much better season for Kilmarnock. That is the good news. The bad news is Dundee were unstoppable this season. Look at that, man. 83 points, only the one solitary defeat. And that came against Kilmarnock. So, there you go. At least Kilmarnock managed to beat the champions. But that will be a very small consolation to them when they look at that third place finish. And it's going to be another season in the championship. But definitely improvements. And maybe they can build on that. And maybe next year they can try and get their way back into the Ladbrokes Premiership. As for improvements in the Cup, there wasn't any, to be honest. Knocked out of the Betfred Cup group stage. Knocked out of the Iron Brew Cup in the third round, which was the earliest possible stage they could get eliminated from. The Ladbrokes Premiership form was really poor there, so it must have improved for them to get as high as they did. Scottish Cup third round beat Arloa. Uh, Then they beat Elgin in the fourth round, so did pretty well there to get into the fifth round, albeit easy ties, and then the loss to Hamilton uh, 2-0 in the fifth round and then finished off the season rather strongly there 
Managing to get that third place in the playoffs. Oh, so look at that. They actually beat Morton in the playoffs on penalties. Then they beat Falkirk on the playoffs on penalties. So both of those games finishing the same after two legs. Aggregate scores ended up a draw. Managed to get through both ties on pens before getting a game, before playing against uh, Dundee United in the Ladbrokes Premiership final elimination playoff. They managed to beat them at Rugby Park 2-1 after being a goal behind, but unfortunately they lost at Tannadice 2-0, and that keeps them in the Ladbrokes Championship. So, I mean, they, I suppose they did all right here towards the end in the league, but they'll be they'll, they'll be raging that they threw away that. 2-1 aggregate win, or ag uh, home leg advantage, so there you go, all said and done, they're still in the championship, can they bounce back next year, let's see, again, they've failed to bring in really anybody, I'm looking here, they've only spent 11.5k, and you can pick up decent players on a free, but, I mean, I think you have to spend something at least, they've managed to bring in, I'm looking at the note, they've got Kevin McKay, he's a noticeable player that stands out, Jack Ruddy, the former Norwich goalkeeper, no, it's not him, I thought it was him. I mean, the guys, this guy's currently playing at Mullerwell now, so he must be decent. Uh, I'm looking at the players here. They've not brought in anybody really of note that I can, you know, look at and say, yo, that, that he could, um, you know, push them on to be title contenders. I just don't see it in terms of players sold. Even Brophy went to Dunfermline, 45k. Craig Kelty going to Hearts, 325k. Jamie McCart, who they just brought in on a free. Leaving the goal with Dundee, Chris Angus going to Hearts for potentially a deal rise to 125k. David Bates, who they brought in, going to Dundee for 48k. So, looks like all the good players that Kilmarnock brought in have left the club. And I think it's going to be another hard season. I think they'll do well to finish in the playoffs this time around. Um, they've, they've sold all their best players and they've just not brought anybody in to the standard of the players leaving Rugby Park. So, I think they're going to find it difficult here. Let's see. Uh, yeah, there you go, a middle of the table finish, 6th place, and uh, the championship will definitely be looking different next season, two teams getting promoted, two teams getting relegated, come on it though, neither of those, just sitting bang in the middle of the table, just finishing in the bottom half, a point behind Falkirk, but disappointing, although what can you expect, if you're going to sell the, the key players at your club, and if you're not going to replace them with players that are, you know, at the same quality, then you are going to go backwards, and unfortunately, that's what's happening to Kilmarnock here. It was another disappointing season in the Betfred Cup. Did manage to win three games, but it wasn't enough to get them through. Iron Brew Cup managed to advance past the third round with a good win against St Mirren at home. Uh, David Menduba putting them, getting them equalised uh, once David Ferry put St Mirren in front. Ross Palmer getting sent off and Kilmarnock advancing via penalties. Then got past the fourth round with a comfortable... Well, not comfortable, but a favourable draw, should I say, against Forfar. Uh, one again on penalties, so two penalty shootouts. Kamarnik seems to do well in the penalties. If you remember last season uh, in the Premiership, the promotion playoffs, they, they got past two of the legs, two of the ties with a penalty win, so they seem to be alright in the penalties. Iron Cup quarter, Iron Brew Cup quarter, uh, uh, Iron Brew Cup quarter final, they've won that against Edinburgh City. Again, another favourable draw, but you can only beat who's in front of you. Goals come for Jordan Shanklin, Craig Hurst and Ryan Harrington. Could there be silverware here on the horizon for Kilmarnock? Look, they had a fair... Look at this. Holy fuck. How many games have they went here without losing? Kilmarnock on such a good run at the moment. Scottish Cup fourth round. Drew against Hip. Oh, Jesus Christ, man. I don't know who's took over at Kilmarnock at the moment, but he's doing a great job. Getting a draw at Easter Road against Hibernian, man. Fantastic stuff. Uh, unfortunately, they, they lost the re this ten penalty shoot. I was just saying how good the penalty shooters were for Kilmarnock. I was talking them up as if they were penalty masters, and I put the scud on them. I've cursed them. They went and lost a penalty shootout to a Hibernian, but uh, well, I think they're still in the Iron Brew Cup. Iron Brew Cup semi final. Uh, they've, oh my God! They've lost another penalty shootout to. Oh my Christ! I was. That's me. That's my fault. I'm sorry, Kelly fans, man. I've, I've, I've cursed your club, man. It's everything I say, the opposite fucking comes through, man. It's unbelievable. Uh, Livingston have put Kilmarnock out of the Ironbrook Cup semi-final by penalty shootout, man. Mental. Absolutely mental. And there you go. And then their form went to absolute shit. So <laughs> there you go. Who knows? If they kept their form up, they could have potentially got into the playoffs for the promotion. But after going out of those cups, man, their, their form just uh, hit the curb, didn't it? It fell off the cliff and now uh, Kilmarnock 
Not a lot they can do now. Heading into this fifth season, can they improve? Can they build on their cup success here? It's the semi-final cup in a fourth round. Uh, you know, getting a, a draw against Hibs. That was, that was decent. Can they build on that though next season and improve the team? Let's have a look. All right. So what I've noticed at the start of this fifth season that they have not really sold uh, as many players, as many as their key players. But then again, they probably don't have many left. They did sell Stuart Carswell, Stephen Saunders and Jack Ruddy, who they just brought in going to Dunfermline. So, what I will say about football managers, I think that the transfer activity is too high. I don't think play, play, uh, clubs really, you know, spring in and sell these amount of players. I think they do need to lower that in future games, but that's, that's a totally different subject. We'll move on here. Ahead. So, what, they, brought, they brought in 16k, it's just not enough, is it? Right, let's go and put Kamarnik fans out the ministry. I can tell straight away they're just they're not going to get promoted, guys. They're, they're not. Well, fuck me, I was almost proved wrong again, wasn't I? Uh, they almost did get promoted. Very unlucky there. Kamarnik finishing second in the league, but not going up. But third place, Dundee getting promoted instead. Airdrie and East Fife getting relegated down to League One. So yeah, a much better season for Kamarnik. Wasn't really anticipating that. Especially since they never really improved the squad. I, I didn't really see how they were going to do much better than mid-table. But they did. They proved me wrong. They did get better than mid-table. But it wasn't enough to get them promoted. Uh, maybe they had a good cup run. That could potentially salvage something. But disappointing. Five seasons in. They've had four attempts at getting back to the Premiership. And they haven't took one. That's, you know, it's disappointing. So again, they failed to get the Betfred Cup group stage. Did manage to advance into the third round of the Iron Brew Cup with a win against Dundee on penalties. The penalty shootout masters have returned. Uh, they did lose in the fourth round though against Dundee United. Fifth, third round of the Scottish Cup got a comfortable win against Spartans, but Spartans are like the whipping boys. Everybody beats Spartans. And then another win against Linlinlith Go Rose. <laughs> I believe Kamonic came out against them earlier in the season, uh, series. They come up against them again, and you know what? That is two very easy ties. Spartans and Linlith goal uh, rose just against the fifth round of the Scottish Cup. They've did very, had a very favourable draw there. Can they go any further? No, they can't because they got Rangers at Ibrox and they got absolutely humped. Goals come from Mark Hulme, Alfro Moredos, Turo Abbey, and Luyanda Mampruru getting Rangers four goals. Lewis Martin got the one goal for Kamarnik, but it was not enough. And they exit at the Scottish Cup, fifth round, and then you can see they finished off the season not bad. And in the playoffs, they lost to Dundee, both legs, 5-2 on aggregate. So there you go, man, disappointing there. Five years they come on it, and it's um, it's not been good, to be honest. Can they improve in the next five? We'll have to wait and see when we do the ten years in the future. But before we leave, I'll have a quick look at the current squad and see what they look like going forward. All right, so here we see the current Kamarnik team. Got a few noticeable players there, but... Now, I know they really sticks it. You've got Kevin McKay, valued at 175k, the left back. Um, he's decent, had spells at Hearts. Um, he also had a spell at Kilmarnock back in the day, one season, then went to Rafe, and now he's ended up back at Kilmarnock. I think this guy's a decent player. I think he's a lot better than Rafe Rovers, that's for sure. And uh, yeah, I'm surprised he's not at a bigger club. Uh, he seems to be doing alright for Kilmarnock. If you look at his average ratings, the two seasons have had him. A 7.16 and a 7.37. That's not bad at all. So, like Kevin McKay has been decent for them. We've got Ewan McHenderson. Uh, valued at 130 k 22 years old. Seems like he could be a decent player in the future. The stats at the moment aren't the best. But maybe he can, you know, turn into a better player. Whether they'll be able to keep him or not, we don't know. We've got Angus Beef, another former, a former Hearts player. His, again, his stats not the best. 26 years old now. I highly doubt there's going to be much more improvement from him. And, uh, they, yeah, that's it, really. So, come on, I'm looking at their squad. Did they have a great squad? Uh, have I got confidence in them going forward, to be honest? No, doesn't look that great. But, man, you never know. Let's have a quick look at who their current manager is going forward. It's Steven Anderson. He's been in the job one year, 164 days. He's got a 50% win record. See, he's doing not bad. And then, see, everybody they've had, they've had Steve Clark or Hide the Tearcakers. Had Steve Clark, Paul Hartley, Steve Atkin, and Jim Duffy. We'll see who's got the best win percentage. So Stephen Anderson, 50%. Jim Duffy, 46%. Stephen Atkin, 28%. He's, oh my god, he did shit. Paul Hartley, 35%. And Steve Clark, 18 God damn it. So 
they do seem to be improving. Uh, I think they're going in the right direction. Steven Anderson did a good job. Be interesting to see how, going forward. Can he get them back into the Premiership? We will cover that in the next series when we go 10 years into Scottish football. But until then, this has been Kilmarnock. Uh, yeah, if you want to let me know what team you want to see next, leave a comment down below and I'll make sure to add them to the list. But until then, thanks for watching. Peace.